Okay, so I've started recording as well. So for those of who will miss out the session, they will have access to this discussion later on as well. So thank you so much again. Thanks for joining the second class. So uh, I've emailed uh, again this morning, requesting all of you to leave your cameras open because we have been told by the uh, administrators that part of our assessment is attendance, but mere show up or just, you know, logging in does not make you attend the class. Attend means you have your full attention to this class. And the fact that our class is not too long, it's a reasonable expectation that you should be present for the whole duration of the class. So I will request all of you to leave your cameras open. Uh, for those of you having issues with your webcam and everything, please solve that problem because this is going to be the live. Virtual will exist. So you need to sort out your camera, your internet, all of these issues. <coughs> thank you so much. For those of you complying, thank you so much. Uh, I will take the attendance now before we proceed with our discussion for the second lecture. So I will just now pull up my attendance sheet and uh, I'll share the screen as well so that you can all see. And I'll call the roll. If you please say yes, I'll put an X beside your name. All right, so uh, Monami, are you present today? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sarah Taranu, are you present? No. Nope. Anika Bushra? No. Uh, Scholastica? Not present today. Choudhury Abrar Shaukat? Present, sir. Thank you. Mohammed Hassan Raihan Dipto? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Kazi Tahmid Hussain. Nilay Ghosh. Uh, Farhidul Haq. Okay. Uh, Mohd Mehdi Hassan. Yes, sir. While I'm doing that, I'm still letting people inside the class. So Mehdi Hassan is present. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed Ahsan Ul Kabir. Okay. Shahriyar Hussain Pranoy. Uh, Fahima Moriam. All right, so there's some folks who are clearly missing out the class, so it's not good for them. Afrida Zahin Tori. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, M.A. Mahamim. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mehzabin Rahman. Uh, Sumaya Islam. Present, sir. Thank you. Uh, Shaira Mahbarakam. Present, sir. Uh, Tazbia Tahmida. Present, sir. Thank you. Uh, Fayaz Binti Rahman. Was that a yes? Fayaz? Present, Okay, okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. Saim Billah? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Maliha Aziz. Present, sir. Uh, Mehnaz Afroz Borni. Azbiha Hassan. Present, sir. ASM Wasif Chaudhary. Present, sir. Thank you. Uh, Inas. Present, sir. Uh, Ariful Haq, Arif. Present, sir. Thank you, Proma Kadir. 
Present, sir. Thank you. Mohamed Sadman Sakib Shams. Mohamed Afikur Rahman. Adib bin Ataur. Present, sir. Here. Uh, Sumaya Zanat. Tazrian bin De Ansar. Present, sir. Thank you. Uh, Nahian Farabi. Present, sir. Ikra Ahmed Ohi. Yes, sir. Thank you. Atar Faisal. All right, so a few people showed up late today and I've, I've admitted you into the class. So could you see there's no X beside your name? At least a couple of people I've seen, they entered in the class late. Like Mahzabin Rahman. Are you in today, Mahzabin? Yes, sir. All right, so you missed out the last class, Mehazabin. So, all right, who else is uh, a late entry today? I will put an X beside your name. There's Scholastica. Sir, um, uh, Scholastica, okay, Scholastica is here today. Thank you. Sir, Sarah Tharnum. Sarah Tharnum. Sir, Fahima Moriam. Okay. Fahima Moriam. Right. Okay. Anybody else whose name I've missed out, just to put an X beside your name? Just check if uh, if it's uh, missing an X beside your name, because definitely it's going to affect your grade as well. So please let me know if you don't see an X beside your name. It's a reasonable expectation that you'll show up in all of the classes because that will give you 5% um, attendance marks. So it is really important if you are after a good grade in this course. And besides, building engagement in the class with your lecture would definitely get you that upper hand in terms of the assessments, in terms of getting a good, good score, right? Attendance is deemed as a very essential aspect in this course. Henceforth, it is highly desirable that you're all showing up in the class and also you are also um, leaving your cameras open because uh, again, just re-emphasizing the fact that to build engagement, we need that connection. We need that face-to-face -face connection. Whether you are using iPad, whether you're using phone, whether you're using a computer, it's always advisable that you leave your cameras open and get engaged. We'll have some engagement building activities as well. So I will get you engaged. So welcome to today's class. So the first uh, class- sorry, sir, I'd like to in interrupt you. I'm sorry, sir, right. to interrupt you. But I was present in the previous class as well, but you didn't give me attendance. Uh, and your name, please? I'm Ariful Hawk Arif. Ariful, I have called the role at the beginning of the class, all right? So you may have showed up late in the class. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. Because I'm just sharing my screen while I'm doing this attendance. So, and I'm giving, calling out two, three times at the end if I missed out anyone's name, all right? So if your name got missed yes, last yes, week, sir. probably I'm, the reason I'm, was he I'm showed late, up late. Sir. Yes, sir. sorry, sir, won't happen again. All right, thank you so much. So I'll put X beside your name as well. Thank you, sir. Last class, all right. Now, moving on, I'll stop sharing this screen and we'll go to a new screen. That will be our today's class discussion. So today we are going to talk about, we, today we're going to immerse ourselves into organizational behavior, all right? 
And while I do that, I am expecting all of you to join with me in this conversation as well. We'll talk about a case study as well to see in the real world why it's important to talk about organizational behavior. The first week, you all have had a very good reflection in your small groups on why organizational behavior is important. You looked into different organization and we understood that in order to perform to the fullest, an organization needs to understand its employees, their motivations, their behaviors, their attitudes, the way they learn, the way they perceive. And these are all factors of organizational behavior that we need to understand. So today I'm just going to give you some phenomena regarding modern organization. How does modern works, workplace look like? And what are the most important thing that organizations need to consider or some of the challenges that the organization needs to grapple with? So today we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to just going to share my screen for today's slide. Okay. Before I do that, can I just remind you that the box site in this course has been updated with some contents. So in the box portal, if you go, there's few new additions. First of all, I have uploaded an ebook for your um, convenience. So that ebook is the updated organizational behavior text. I think it's a great resource for you. So you can look up to that ebook and you'll find all the chapters and case studies and discussions. So feel free to just browse that ebook, just read through it and you'll find everything. And most of the discussion that I'm having or the lecture slides are all based on the ebook. So that's number one. The second thing is I'm updating the lecture slides. I'm uploading them in fact into YouTube and then I've added a link there as well. So if you go to week one section drop down, you'll see section three lecture slides or the like the lecture discussion, whatever the, the title is. So that's the YouTube channel where I put up all of my lectures and discussions in there. So you'll find everything in there. I'll try to update that every now and then. You might find some other courses as well, not relevant to you, but um, there's no restriction into that. The third thing is uh, there's a weekly consultation hour that I have established. It's every Friday, 11 to 12 p.m., same link. So feel free to drop in, no appointment needed. Other times you may have to take an appointment, but on Friday, 11 to 12 p.m., I will be available for consultation one hour into the same Zoom link that we are using today. So that's my weekly consultation hour, folks. So feel free to join that. And the link is also updated in box site. And you'll also find some uh, case studies that I will upload as well. So there's a case study about Google. And in fact, that's the topic that we're going to talk about in our reflection as we will be talking about organizational behavior. So now the time to share my screen, I'll do that. Finally. And Zoom has now some nice functionality to raise hands. So at any point, if you've got any question for me, feel free to raise hand. So we're in week one, going to lecture two. So last week, if you can recall, we talked about a few things like Minsberg uh, was a scholar who gave some uh, in reflections regarding the manager's role. And just tracking back to our previous discussion that managers these days, they don't only make sure that the organization is productive or the organization is uh, performing well, but it, managers also need to ensure that they need to build some interpersonal connection with their employees. It's super essential. So before I start talking about the interpersonal aspect, can someone tell me what is interpersonal refers to or what is interpersonal means? Um, sir, can I? Yes, please. Go ahead. Um, there are <clears throat> they are a set of skills which help us to communicate with the other person. Yes, exactly. Nice. Very nice. Thank you, Anas. So your skill to communicate with others. And that is, in fact, 
considered as most important skill these days. Regardless of how talented you are, regardless of how skilled you are, but if you don't have that interpersonal skill these days, you would not be able to do well in an organization. So if you see Mintzberg's 10 managerial role, he has put interpersonal skill or role at the, at the very beginning, because even before you do anything else, you need to build your interpersonal skills so that you're able to interact with the other person or other team members in your team. So I'm not going through these because we've already talked about this, but just reflecting back with this model and again, tracking back on the fact that organizational behavior will be comprised of various other disciplines. So we'll talk about some of the psychological stuff. You'll be wondered to know that we'll be talking about some of the psychological principles, some of the psychological you know, tests like conditioning and learning and perception. And you'll really enjoy those discussions. We'll talk about some of the social psychology aspects, like you know, how people in a group behave, how people in a society communicate, the group, the conflict and things like that. Some sociological aspect and some anthropological aspect as well. So imagine the dimension of organizational behavior, how vast it is. So we'll have bits and pieces from all of these various different dimensions or disciplines into this course. So these were some things we discussed and then we ended up with having a definition of organizational behavior where we looked into organizational behavior. This was a more holistic definition provided by Robinson Judge, the textbook that we are referring to. So it's a field of study that investigates the impact of individuals, groups, and structures have on behaviors within the organization for the purpose of applying such knowledge towards improving an organization's effectiveness. So the last bit that needs to be kept in mind that whatever we're doing for the sake of the effectiveness of, of an organization. That means how an organization could be more effective. And in order to do, do that, you are going to analyze the individuals and groups and their, like how they function and what they do and things like that. So may I just take you back to some discussion regarding how an organization works? Because a lot of you are fresh graduates and you only have you know, had your high school or maybe your HSC and you never had an opportunity to work in an organization or maybe you had, but uh, I just wanted to introduce you with how an organization operates and what are the basic elements of an organization. So let me just take you to that. So what is organization? When we refer to something called an organization, we need to deconstruct that a little bit. So organization is a collection of people working together with the division of labor to achieve a common purpose. So the word division of labor, that might be a bit tricky. So let me just explain that as well. So the division of labor means you go to an organization and not everyone is doing the same work. You will see some people are working for marketing. Some people are working, working for sales. Some people are working for finance. Some people are working on technology. So likewise, people are divided according to various roles. So organization is nothing. It's simply a collection of people with a division of labor and all of them, they have a common purpose. So if you work for a bank, the common purpose is that the bank wants to be more profitable. It wants more customers to deposit their money into the bank so that they can get some uh, dividend or some interest from that. If you go to a telecom, it's the same. If you go to a medical, if you go to uh, a hospitality organization, well, whatever that is. So organization should return value to society and satisfy customer needs to justify its continued existence. Now, this was another important aspect and probably this is something many organizations are missing today. An organization should, should return value to society. So this is something that you need to instill inside your mind that organization does not only operate to earn money, but they also have some, sorry, they also have some binding duty to 
return a value to society. So how the organization can return some value to the society so that they don't only make money, but they can also satisfy or give something back to the society. Now we may have seen many organizations that are doing some social activity in the name of corporate social responsibility or some charitable works and whatever that is. But eventually it's really important that organizations are giving back to the society. Let me give you an example. Now, you're all familiar with iPhone, right? Who, who is not familiar with iPhone or Apple brand, right? Now, do you know that what, the Apple phones, where are they manufactured? Yes, sir. Sir, China? Yeah. China? Yeah, that's right. All the Apple phones, in fact, they're actually manufactured in, in China. So in China, there are some remote in Chinese remote locations. There are lots of factories and that's where all the phones are being manufactured. All the phones and iPads and computers and everything because US, they design all the product, but the labor cost in US is humongous. So they're not able to manufacture the product in US. So all the products are being produced in China. And in China, the labor rate is probably a dollar per hour or even less than that. But in, in US, the labor hour would be probably $20 per hour, something like that. So you can see the difference. So that's why all these products are outsourced and produced from China. Um, same goes for products like, you know, if you want to buy a pair of Nike shoes, you know how adorable and how great the quality of Nike shoes are. But these products are made in the remote villages of <laughs> Indonesia or China. And these are the places these products are being manufactured. So this, while this is the true picture, another true picture is that the people who are working in these remote factories, they're being exploited. They don't get enough money. They don't get enough facility. They don't get enough additional privilege. While they are producing the, the best products in the world, when it comes to their own benefits and, and the you know, facilities that they get, that was so poor. So the Apple brands like Apple and Nike, they have been subject to media scrutiny. And not many years ago, both of these brands were being highly uh, you know, scrutinized for their selfish behavior, for ill-treating their employees into those remote villages. Even in, in China, the you know, they, they had some like, you know, the workers uh, who used to work on iPhones and everything, um, they had, they, they used to commit suicide because the places that they used to live, they were like, you know, they're like 10, 20 people living together in one simple, one small room cramped into that small room. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we see all this great product, like, you know, here's the iPhone, you know, it's a great phone and everything. But on the other side, these brands, they're selfish. They're just want people's money and they're not giving enough to these people. So eventually what happened, Apple and Nike, they had to make sure that they are returning value to the society. So these matters, they got into media attention and finally Apple took those matters into consideration and they started paying better wage to their workers. Nike started to look into those, you know, child labor and all of those factors. So eventually they were pushed to return value to the society. So being an organization means not only becoming the best brand in the world, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you also look after the society as well. You need to return value to the society. So when it comes to an organization, it is like a system. It functions like a system. It's an open system. Transform resource inputs from the environment into product or service input. So what do you get as input that will be transformed as an output? So this is like, you know, the system, the, I'm, I'm just, again, 
setting up the like I guess the base of our discussion just to let you know how the organizations function. So the environment is like you know the if you can see this diagram on the far right, left hand side you'll see the resource input because these are the input you have people your money your material your technology and then on the far right hand side you've got the output and the organization is where this is all being produced so in the middle is where all the organization they need to be careful about that how well the system is because if your input is not, if, imagine your input is great, but what's happening here, your organization and the behavior analysis of your behavior and everything, if it's not that great, the output is not going to be, to be best. And I'm gonna give you plenty of examples that despite having great inputs, some of the organizations weren't able to leverage that to their benefit and eventually their output was bad. Um, and I want a good example again, I think I've spoken about this before or not, but how many have you heard about a brand called Nokia? Yes, sir. Uh, it was a mobile phone brand yes. back in the days. Back in the days, Nokia used to be the market leader, right? When it comes to like mobile communication, Nokia used to be the market leader. We know that you know probably a lot of you weren't even born at that time. Maybe you were, <laughs> but there was a time Nokia used to produce some great quality mobile phones, and people used to just like that was a pride possession. I remember I was in college at the time, and I like you know I had all of my life savings at that time and I could buy a Nokia phone at that time I could afford to buy a Nokia phone at that time so Nokia was like something that we were so proud of and it was a great product and at some point Nokia had 40 percent of the global mobile market share you can imagine the global market share I'm talking about but what happened to Nokia do you hear that name any longer when you go to buy a smartphone, is Nokia your first preference any anymore? No, probably, not. probably not. They are Born named, much. yeah. So what, what's the problem with Nokia? Despite becoming, being the market leader, despite being the, uh, you know, the frontier or the pioneer of the mobile communication, you know, if you consider the, the, left hand side here like you know they had people they had money they had material they had technology but eventually the organization was able to not able to leverage from that and eventually the output it was a failed product so what was the problem we will analyze that later on but i'm just giving you some clues now um now these are some basic things you just need to keep in mind because when it comes to managers that's a very broad terminology. And you need to keep in mind, like there's line managers, there's staff managers, functional managers, general managers, administrators. So these are different types of managers. I'm gonna share these slides with you as well. So you'll have access to all of this discussion. And uh, just a clue that these will be part of your quizzes as well, because we'll have some quizzes. So, you know, whatever discussion we're having, these will be part of your quizzes as well. Let me share with you the management process. And again, reflection, this will be a quiz question. The management process is comprising these four main functions. It's also known as PLOC, P-L-O-C or P-C-O-L, whichever order you organize. So the management function, it refers to planning, organizing, leading and controlling. So manager does these four functions. So a manager's core function includes first plan, because you need to have some planning skill. You need to plan, like setting performance objective, setting some action plan. Then you need to be able to organize things so that how to put the right people into the right place. That's another important aspect. So 
organizing is another important skill. Then you should have some leading skill as well, where you will lead your employees. That means putting the right place in the right place and making sure that everyone is performing. So inspiring people to perform to their fullest. That's another important aspect. And finally, controlling is very important because you should be able to control your employees. You don't have to be a control freak, but at least know that measure their performance, evaluate their performance. That is really important. So these are the main functions that a manager would play. So the following slide describes this and uh, we just need to keep these in mind. So quiz question, what are the main functions of a manager? Planning, organizing, leading, controlling. All right, so now, now we're going to talk about why have we been talking about organization and behavior? Because these are all the discussion that we had to deconstruct the term organization. What is organization? Who is a manager? What's a manager's function? And things like that. So now let us reflect back to the organizational behavior and why are we even talking about this discipline now? So here's what traditional workplace used to look like, right? You can see traditional workplace was like kissing everyone's bottom or like, you know, you're always doing flattering, flattering others. And that was what traditional workplace used to look like. Paper-based organization, if you still go to one of the you know, government banks in Bangladesh, you will still see these things are happening. If you still go to one of the government offices in Bangladesh, you'll probably see, not only in Bangladesh, it's probably in, in other countries as well. I have been a government employee of Australia for five years. So I know things are sometimes full of bureaucracy in, in the advanced countries as well. So traditional workplace used to look like this, but, you guys are the new generation folks. And in the new generation, we get to see organizations which are becoming more virtual, organizations which are becoming more laid back, organizations where you are free to express your opinion, organizations where you don't need to go and wear the same old uniform every day. You can wear funky t-shirts and hoodies and you can go to the organizations these days. You, you, you develop a very agile mindset uh, and people would consider you as uh, uh, someone with the intellectual capital, not only like, you know, well-dressed up, you know, with good educational certificate, but people who brings value to the organization with his or her knowledge and experience. So these are the most important things these days in modern day organization. So modern day organizations are becoming more flexible. It's very virtual. That's also another nature. At least after COVID, we have realized that virtualness of the organization. So this is one of the phenomena that we need to keep in mind that how the shift of the traditional to the modern organization is. Another important factor in this working in today's economy is that we all have been juggling multiple things. It's a networked economy. It's a global economy. Uh, organizations are measured based on their performance. Now imagine how we are bridging the gap today. I'm probably sitting in Dhaka now, and some of you may be sitting in Dhaka or maybe outside of Dhaka, wherever that is. I had some students from international students in another MBA class. They were, you know, joining the class from Uganda. Last year, I was giving lecture from all the way from Sydney. So today's economy, we see it's a very globalized economy. Everything is virtual. People are juggling with multiple, you know, things. Some of you might be working. Some of you might be rapping. Some of you might be singing. Some of you might be reading. You know, you've got multiple skills. You bring diverse skill set these days. Intellectual capital. Here's another term I want you to embed inside your mind, all right? Next time we will be referring to this a lot. See, financial capital means all about money. Uh, your like, you know, structural capital, 
it's all about your structure, your building and everything. But intellectual capital is what every organization is looking for. So intellectual capital is your brain. You know, organizations out there, they want your brain. Now, many organizations, they still want their employees bum on the seat from nine to five, right? There are lots of organizations, they still want their employees. Now, you gotta be in the office from nine to five, regardless. But if you see the modern organizations, they don't at all care about where the hell you are. You could be anywhere. But the organization wants your brain, like, you know, invest your brain into that. So they want your intellectual capital, the collective brain power or shared knowledge of their workforce. So we have knowledge workers these days, people who bring knowledge in the organization. They just don't bring a pair of hand because previous, you know, conception of the organizations were that, yes, every organization, every employee, has to be a worker, they bring a pair of hands and they have to be in the office. But modern organization, they think that you bring knowledge to the organization. You just don't bring a pair of hand or yourself, but you bring knowledge to the organization. So they actually endorse the fact that your knowledge is important. But this was not a thing back, like, you know, maybe a decade, like few decades ago. Okay, another fact, globalization. We are all suffering the fever of globalization. Everything is global these days. As you can see in this image, everything is global. So you need to embrace the fact that globalization is also another factor, which is really important. In the workplace, in the mindset, everywhere you need to instill the knowledge of globalization so you have to be a very global person these days if if you don't know what's happening on the other parts of the world today this morning you would not be able to become a good manager as a manager your job is not only to see what's happening in the local arena but you also need to understand What's happening in the global arena? You should know what's the COVID situation in Europe. If I ask you, all right, what's the COVID situation in Europe? You should have some answer. If I ask you, okay, what's happening in the economy of China today? You should have some answer. If I ask you what's happening in the, in the economy of US, who is the, you know, which party is dominating in US? So these are all factors you need to be considered. You, you need to have the awareness and knowledge about. So. The, the smartphone, the thing that we call it, this is like probably the most powerful thing that we have in our uh, hand today. It allows us to see anything. If you go to uh, any news portal, you can see what's happening everywhere. So as a manager these days, it is super essential for yourself to be aware of the global arena, what is happening. Technology is another factor. If you don't know how to operate technology, you will be considered a dinosaur, all right? You do not exist in this world. If you don't know how to play with your virtual devices, like you know, how to set up Zoom, how to fix your voice, how to fix, fix your like, you know, speaker and microphone and everything, you would not be able to survive. Because guess what? This is going to be live for the next how many ever years? the virtual nature of work, the virtual classroom, the virtual thing. So you need to adapt yourself with technology. And true to its notion, even my seven-year-old daughter, she knows much better than YouTube than myself. Like, you know, she is a savvy of YouTube. She knows everything. She knows how to operate the iPad. The other day I couldn't find like, you know, some, some functions in iPad and she was showing me how to like, you know, find stuff in iPad. And that's the reality. The kids these days, they're born with a smartphone in their hand. The next day they, 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 they're born in this world, they get exposed to technology and everything. So every kid these days, they're getting exposed. And you guys are fortunate to be part of that generation as well. You are all tech savvy. So computer literacy is a must. The virtual space is going to be a must. So these are phenomena of modern organization. 
And as a manager, it is your binding duty to know all of these factors, know how to deal with these matters. Workplace diversity. This is another important factor that the society is grappling with. Diversity has become a factor where we need to embrace it. Um, when you work part of a multinational corporation, it's obvious that you will be exposed to people from different cultural setting. You will have people with different religious beliefs. You will have with people with different cultural beliefs. You will have people with different sexual orientation as well. You will have people with different religious affiliations. And this is something that you need to be aware of and you have to be respectful of as well. You need to respect others' opinion. Wherever they're coming from, whatever their opinion is, whatever their values are, these are obviously the male and female debate. It's a, it's a like, you know, probably a lifelong debate of like, you know, whether males or female and in every organization still in developed societies as well, there's a thing called a glass ceiling effect. Please question, what is a glass ceiling effect? A glass ceiling effect refers to an invisible barrier limiting the advancement of women and minority groups. Still today, as we the human race has advanced so much, but still today, we do face these challenges that some societies, they still are not giving women enough right and the minority groups as well. So invisible ceiling that exists within the organizations. So make yourself familiar with these terminologies as well, because this will be very useful. You'll be able to use these terminologies as well. So we're talking about all the phenomena of modern organizations and what the managers need to be aware of. Diversity was another one. Here's another one, ethics. <clears throat> so ethics is another one. We all have to be ethical. As I mentioned with the example of Apple and Nike that despite becoming the biggest and the largest brand in the world, they have been subject to criticism of not being ethical. And this is happening everywhere. Major corporations in the world, at one point they're only considering the shareholder value, but they're not considering the stakeholder value. Can someone give me the difference between shareholder and stakeholder? What do you mean by shareholder and stakeholder? Don't worry For if you're wrong. Someone who is uh, everyone within the organization, I guess, and shareholder is someone who has uh, like a certain portion of the, like holds a certain portion of the share uh, within a certain organization. I'm not sure. Okay, that's so. good. Good one. All right, anyone else? Shareholder, shareholder value is basically like it focuses more on the dividends, focuses more on the profits, whereas stakeholder um, a value is more of like an in, a, a convenience maybe to the in, to the employees like um the uh, motivational factors the increments all those things so uh, companies are more focused in inter-organizational uh, benefits more all right uh, sorry in addition to the shareholder benefits all right let me just explain that a little bit thanks to both of you uh, let me just explain the meaning of stakeholder. Now, the stake, the word stake, what's the meaning of the word stake? Let's just try to deconstruct this again. Stake, what's the Bengali word of stake? The Bengali word of stake is kuti. Okay. So the word stake means a kuti, but even in other example is if you want to put a tent, what would you do? You need some kuti, right? It kuti. Stakeholder means kuti dharok, or that actor organization er kuti dhore ase jara. The ones who are holding the kuti of that organization, they're called the stakeholder. And who are the ones who are holding the stake of the organization? That would be your employees. That would be your suppliers. That would be your 
everyone, distributors, that would be even your customers, that would be your society. So every, all of these parties in a way or another, directly or indirectly, they're holding your organization. Can the company survive without the customers? No. Can the company survive without their suppliers? No. Can the company survive without their distributors? No. Can the company survive with their competitors? Even in some cases, no, you need your competitors as well. So everyone that is holding the stake or have direct or indirect interest into your organization, they are your stakeholder. Now, in a way, your shareholders are also your stakeholder as well. But the shareholders, they only care about money, all right? So shareholder, they only invest in your business and their only expectation is that you give them more money. That's the shareholder value. Stakeholder, on the other hand, the term stakeholder value is a vast terminology, which refers that you need to look into the social aspect of that. And that includes the environmental aspect, that includes the social aspect, that includes the welfare aspect. So these are called stakeholder value. So we will probably have more detailed discussion regarding the difference between stakeholder and shareholder value. But fundamentally, these two are two opposite discussion where stakeholder value only refers to the social and the value creating aspect where the shareholder is only about financial aspect. Now, moving on quickly, we'll have some group discussion quickly. So productivity is another aspect modern organizations are grappling with, how to make their employees more productive. Now, as companies are becoming more virtual these days, there's a growing concern among organizations whether our employees are productive or not. Many organizations, they don't trust their employees. They think that when I let my employees work from home, they're actually not working, actually. Probably they're watching Netflix or they're playing games or they're just like, you know, maybe probably dating with their boyfriends and girlfriends or doing something else. But some organizations, they don't at all care. They think, you know, working from home is perfectly all right. So productivity is a growing concern among organizations. Responding to labor shortage, improving customer service. Now, here's the case study part, discussion. Now, with this image, what do you understand? Or you may have already understood which organization I'm talking about, right? I'm talking about Google. So Google has been considered undoubtedly one of the best workplace in the world, in every country. So we're going to have some reflection on this, but let me just give you some picture. So this is like Google's cafe and the cafe is full of every food that you want, free during your work hour, as many time as you want to eat, as many time as you want to, you know, have like, you know, like coffee or whatever food you want to have, you're free to do that. Do you know what is this thing called? This is a nap pod. A nap pod is Google employees can take a nap as many time as they want during their work. You don't feel like working? Yeah, just go take a nap. You want to sleep there for an hour? No one cares. Your boss wouldn't give you a bad look if you're taking a nap. That's just like probably a simple picture. But in Google offices, they have Xbox. They have like, you know, they have PSPs. They have all sorts of gadgets. You want to play games during your work hour? Go do that. Your boss will be happy that my employee is like, you know, spending some downtime over there. And they'll be more happy if you do that. No one's going to give you that bad look. Where... Where else in the world would you get that? Probably few organizations these days, they would endorse such behavior of their employees. And this is the reason Google is becoming the most sought after and uh, rated by employees as the most, I would, or the highest ranked workplace in the world in terms of, of this. Now, for those of you who have seen the case study video in the back side, there is a video on, on Google, which actually shows how or what are the main things in Google that is everyone likes, all right? Or why Google is becoming so effective as an organization. 
Now, in a like face-to-face -face situation, I would have now put up that video in the class and I would have shown you that video now. But unfortunately, I know some of you are probably using it from their phone or you know iPad, so the accessibility may not be that that clear. So I would probably probably not do that. But if you are able to, feel free to do that while we talk. Uh, but there's few things that we we might just single out, and this is where we'll do some quick reflection. All right, why Google employees are so productive. I've got one simple question and it's a group work. In your group, I want you to talk about why Google employees are most productive. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open up the breakout rooms. And in your breakout room, you'll have three, four other friends. And I want you to very quickly within three minutes, well, I'll give you exactly three minutes. Within three minutes, I want you to quickly reflect why Google employees are so productive. So we'll have a reflection after that. So let me just break out, uh, create the breakout rooms. And I'm going to randomly assign you to the breakout rooms. And can I just make sure that your attendance in the class means you are attending the class for the whole duration of the class? Because towards the end, if you just drop out, you know, you, you will not get a mark. So please stay in the class for the whole duration of the of the class. So you're going to have um, six groups and I will assign that now. I'll open all the rooms. Now we'll be in a small room. So you've got one simple question. Why Google employees are most productive in three minutes? All right. Someone to coordinate the discussion and someone to report back. Off you go. For those of you who are still here, join the breakout rooms. You should have a pop-up comment saying join the breakout room. Just join the breakout room, please. Abrar? Jodhi Abrar Shokat? Roma? Anika? Shodri Abrar, you're with me? Abrar, can you hear me? Hey, Inas. Yes, sir. I'm really sorry. My net's like right. going to assign you to a group. All the groups yes, are talking sure. about why Google employees are most productive. All right. So I will all just right, call sir. you into one group.
Hello, sir. Hey, Hello. uh, Abrar. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, there was a problem uh, due to, as I have two devices connected, one is due to the monitor, I'm see, watching the slides in, and uh, one is uh, uh, due to the camera, I am due to the camera. So I was uh, divided into two groups. One is number four and oh, one okay, number five. Right. I had a decision with number four and uh, uh, you asked me to start out my video with uh, group five. I couldn't join that group. Oh, okay, all right. I was confused because, you know, I was talking with the other Abra account and I was talking with that Abra and that wasn't responding. So I thought, you know, you're not in the class. Probably you're watching Netflix while in the class. No, but sir. that's all right. Uh, I think going forward, it'd be good if you just remain connected with one device rather than uh, not two, because uh, that will confuse me. All right. Okay, sir. Yeah. All right. So now we have people all came back from the breakout rooms. All right, so quick discussion from group one. So group one, what was quick reflection? Just share with us. <clears throat> what was group um, okay. one? Sir, uh, we decided we, we got like five points. Yeah. Uh, number one would be uh, Google does not have tiring and stressful job where they don't have to do the same and boring job from nine to five. They have different uh, kind of work. Uh, number two would be they have a very motivating environment where um, they can take rest or where they can work whenever they feel like and nobody, the boss is not, does not have eyes on the employee all the time. So um, uh, that's number two. Number three would be encouragement for innovation and recreation. Number three is flexible schedule. Number four is it's very fun to work over there. You can um, like the, the kind of people, they're very open-minded and uh, understanding. And it's, it's, it's fun to work in, in an environment that the organization has. And the last one is they have acknowledgement of efforts. Um, every work is like given right uh, value. People are encouraged and acknowledged and appreciated. Okay, that's a great point. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Passing on to the next group. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sir, form group two, and uh, we that uh, flexibility. Uh, Google has. Uh, Google has been one of the first company that uh, understanding employees' needs. Uh, it worker have a, a flexible schedule, sir, so that they can work uh, uh, like uh, in their terms and enhance their creativity and they don't have any kind of mental pressure by their manager or leader. Mm, that's why, sir, they are, uh, they are most productive. Okay, great reflections. Thank you. Passing on to the next group. Uh, is it our group? Uh, group three? No, it's three. Okay, so we came up uh, with a few ideas. Uh, for example, uh, Google uh, trains, through us, uh, trains through a system like employee to employee or uh, another name, it's G2G or uh, Googler to Googler. Uh, in this training system, they, uh, they can boost up their own knowledge to uh, their uh, very own employees. And uh, it, it actually uh, it boosts, boosts their uh, creativity and productivity. And uh, another, uh, another thing is um, the leisure time benefits. In their uh, leisure time, they can uh, play various uh, field, infield games and outfield games, um, which actually um, uh, deprive them, uh, them from the work pressure and uh, the workload. Uh, so uh, that's how uh, actually they uh, increase their productivity. That's all. Okay, great reflection, Sam. Thank you. Passing on to the next group. Is it our? I'm really sorry. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, sorry, it's ours. Oh, so what I feel like is that we know that employees need to be motivated to be efficient. 
So the Google Workplace and the environment, they feel like they're not really working. It's like so nice. Like they can get to eat whatever they want. They can take a nap. They're not under any sort of pressure. So a good state of mind gets the most out of someone. So I feel like that is the reason they're so productive and okay. they can work so well. Yep. That's great. Thank you, Barbie. Passing Thank on you, to the next group. Is it group six? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, fine. So my answer would be very simple. Uh, it's stress-free and the workplace which reflects home, practically. Google basically has a lot of features in it, such as, as the napping one, which will actually which reflect home. Like suppose when you're working, you're really stressed and all in and in normal corporate office, you do not have the luxury or the liberty to go and sleep or take a nap. I mean, your boss is just going to give you a look. But in Google, it's the other way around. You're encouraged, you're motivated to play games in order to take breaks. You're also encouraged to take a nap. You're having free, uh, free food and everything. These, these all affect your state of mind. And as a result, it enhances your productivity. We all know no one works better when it's uh, due to the stress level, except minus some people, varies. But mostly uh, speaking in general, a stress-free workplace and a workplace, especially which reflects like home, like you're being in your own home, is something which enhances your productivity a lot. Hence, as a result, Google is labeled as the world's, one of the world's like best workplace to work and the most productive, the employee. Okay, that's great, Ines. Thank you so much. Well, okay, passing you. on to the next group. Um, so uh, we have got five points. Uh, the first is, work, uh, first is work environment. Uh, Google has a good, a very good work environment. They have, um, uh, they have a canteen where they provide with free food. They have um, an, uh, a game room. And next is workers' flexibility. The workers are allowed to work on a flexible schedule. They're not bound to the nine to five schedule. And creativity is highly encouraged for them. Mm -hmm. and, and next, there's good teamwork and diverse uh, employee. Uh, Google does not hire only Americans or the Canadians. They hire from uh, across the globe. Yeah. And the last is fringe benefits. Google provides with free dental and health checkup. They have on-site physicians. And uh, they have, um, even if a, an employee uh, expires, they have a death benefits that they give to the deceased employees' families. Okay, thanks, Roma. Good reflections. Any other group left? Was there any other group which had any discussion? All right. I'd like some of the other people to speak as well. Don't let the usual guys or usual folks speak. I want everyone to participate, all right? So everyone needs to like, you know, participate, try to get the habit of, you know, speaking up and discussing and, you know, so yeah, just for future. But anyway, thanks everyone. That was very good reflection. And more or less you've all understood and you all had good points regarding why Google is rated or ranked as the most effective or the best workplace on earth. Now, I wonder why this philosophy is not applied by all the organization. Do you wonder as well? Because if every organization would set up their office like Google Office, they would have had like, you know, free cafe, free games, free on-site physicians, on-site gym. Their employees would be more productive, isn't it? But why aren't uh, the other organizations applying the same philosophy? What's the problem? Lack of resources. Okay. The lack of money. So cost is so cost effective. Yeah, I think a uh, lack of trust as well. They do not trust the employees to uh, be productive when all the other facilities are given. All right. Yes. Yes, you are all right in a sense. And look, this is not that other organizations they do not have resources. It's not that other organizations they don't have money there are lots of organizations they have lots of money but eventually it gets down to the management philosophy what philosophy is adopted by the management because 
if your management is like, you know, and this is what we are going to talk about in this course as well, because while what the management philosophy is, because the overarching philosophy of the management will, will be displayed in every layer of the organization. Now, Google has adopted a very, very flexible and a laid back mindset or philosophy. And the laid backness is that they let their people do whatever they want. So fundamentally, their philosophy is Google thinks that, yes, inherently, every human being out there is productive and every human being out there is willing to work. Every human being has potential. But this is not the philosophy that every organization endorses. Every organ not every organization endorses that, you know, all the people are productive or, you know, they have the willingness to perform. But some organizations, they always want to police their people, what they're doing. Are they on their seat for nine, nine to five? Are they all working properly? You know, all of these kind of things. So this all tracks back to the organization's overarching management philosophy, what the philosophy is. So hopefully in this course, we'll be able to understand the organizational behavior. Now, Google has a new, new actually role, which not many organizations actually have. They have a role called people analyst. So you may have heard financial analyst, you may have system analyst, you may have HR analyst, but Google has a position called people analyst. And the people analyst job is actually analyze the people, analyze their people and their behavior. So these are, those are the ones who would have mastered the skill of organizational behavior because they analyze each of their employees. And by analyzing their employees' behavior, they can then offer the best offerings to their employees so that they could transform into a better employee. So I hope if every organization could actually understood the philosophy or like adopt that philosophy, maybe every organization could become like Google, more productive and more effective and more efficient. So folks, uh, this was our today's discussion. Towards the end, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna quickly summarize what we discussed today. So this is probably the key takeaway from our today's class. Again, some of these may be subject to your quiz question. So what have we talked about today? So in our today's discussion, we talked about why managers need to develop their interpersonal skills to be effective in their job. It's really important as a manager, not only to have your planning, leading, organizing, and controlling skill, but at the same time, you need to have your interpersonal skill so that you know how to deal with your people or the employees. Then key takeaway from our today's class, and in fact, our previous class is that OB is a field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structure have on behavior within an organization. Organizational behavior focuses on improving productivity, employee job satisfaction, citizenship behavior, and reducing absenteeism and turnover as well. Because when you will know why your people are not satisfied, not motivated, then you can reduce absenteeism from your workplace, turnover from your workplace. OB uses systematic study to improve predictions of behavior. Because when you learn organizational behavior, you can predict the behavior of your people. And based on that, you'll be able to satisfy them. OB recognizes and helps managers to improve their people skill and to see the value of workforce diversity and practices. It also seeks to improve organizations and help managers cope with the many changes faced in today's workplace. So these are all the key takeaway from our today's class, okay? So I hope that week one was a very explorative discussion for all of you. You have understood why organizational behavior, why are we studying this discipline? 
what is the importance? So this was like setting the, like, you know, the ground for our discussion in the coming weeks. In the coming weeks, we will be exploring more interesting topics where we will be looking into more interesting, some of the stuff from the psychology, some of the stuff from, you know, uh, sociology, and we'll talk about those in the coming weeks, all right? So before I wrap up today's session, just a few key highlights. Number one, regularly check the box site for all the updated contents and resources. Uh, I will be updating lots of like, you know, journal articles and some other resources as well. You will have the ebook. The ebook is already there. So feel free to just look into the ebook. You'll find lots of great contents on the ebook as well. If you've got an iPad or a smartphone, you're stuck in traffic, I would highly encourage you to make that the best of your time and, and read through that. Um, I have uploaded um, the lecture, like, you know, the discussion. Today's discussion was also recorded. So I'll just upload it onto YouTube. So if you go to the weekly sections, you'll find the weekly YouTube, like, you know, like in the in sections, like all the videos, the discussions and everything. Uh, class attendance, please remain, attend for the whole duration of the class. And again, your camera problem needs to be sorted out so that you are visible in the class as well. I am taking notes of which, who are present and who are not along with the camera, because we have been asked to, to make sure that we do that. So this is like a BRAC university policy that the students are present in the class with their cameras open, not just entering into the class again, again late. Uh, all right, what else? We have few people who did not show up in the class. Um, okay, there's a hand raised from Sarah. Sarah, please go ahead. Waiting for Sarah's question. Sir, uh, so like, do we have, um, oh, I wanted to change my email that you showed in the attendance paper. Like it has a old email of mine that I used uh, to open my uses, but can I, should I email yes. you my new? No, email? let me just do it now. I've raised a good point. Uh, I do have some Yahoo emails. I need to update those Yahoo emails as well, some yeah. Outlook emails so that, you know, I have the school. So, Sarah, I will update your, what's your Should email? Should I write in the message in the chat box? Uh, yeah, just paste it in the chat screen. If anyone would, else would like to update your, like the, uni, the university and the updated one, because I when I emailed you guys, I had a few bounce backs because you didn't have the updated. So have a look into the screen. Please see if you've got your updated email here, please, so that I can update. Because otherwise, you will miss out. Um, you will you will miss out some of the communications that I will be sharing. Okay, so I got Sarah's email as well. Yep, it's updated now. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Sir, I have given mine. All right. Now, how about, hold on, guys. How about, let me just share like a link, all right? I'm just going to share a link because I can't just copy and paste it now. It's going to be a big job for myself. Let me just share a link now. And I want all of you to update your university email into this link. So I'll stop sharing and uh, I'll just share one link with you. And I want all of you to just update you, your uh, university email in there. So let's just make this Google. Thanks to all of you for your nice participation in the class today. I have an issue with my attendance.
Who is that? I am Ansar Asanul Kabir, sir. Asanul Kabir. Yes, I joined uh, during uh, 11 at 8. But maybe I didn't give my attendance. Uh, Asanul Kabir. All right, you're not present last week, Asan. Uh, sorry, the first class. Last, you I missed the last class during right. the Amanda, sir. Yeah, please do show up in the class. It is really important because your attendance matters for your ultimate grade in this course. So attendance in the class is super important. Um, sir, uh, my attendance was also not given. Who's that? Sir Kazi Sir, class recordings are uploaded in the box, right? Um, say that again, please. Class recordings are uploaded in box. Yes, in box. Um, yes. Okay. So. Sorry, just give me a little bit of time. I'm just about to share this with you. Alrighty, so here's the link. So on the chat screen, I'm putting this link where I want you to update your university email. You can quickly do it now. Are we supposed to erase the old one and replace it with our G2? Yeah, I can erase the old one. That's fine. I have um, the old one. So it shouldn't be a problem. So can you uh, repeat where you have given the link? Sorry, a bit louder, please. Can you repeat, like, where did you give us the link? Uh, on the chat screen. Oh. Let's go to the chat, chat section. All right, look, uh, while you do that, I'll probably let you all go. So unless if there's any further question, I think you're all feel free to go now. Um, thanks for your time. Just again, make sure to check your box, box portal where we will have all the updates and everything. So it should all be good from here, all right? So thanks for your today's time, today's class. Uh, the slides will be updated, the lecture notes and everything will be updated. So you'll find lots of insight, great insight from there. Uh, make sure to spend some 
quiet time by yourself to look into the resources so that you can do some reflection on your own other than the class time, that will be really helpful. And as I re-emphasized again um, and doing that again now is that all the discussion that we're having will have some quizzes based on this discussion as well. So it's very important that you pick up the discussion that we're having. So till next week, thanks for your time. Um, I'll see you next week again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Weekend, and I'll see you next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam.